What's going on, guys? This is Hold the Door DFS. We are doing an MLB showdown breakdown for our two games that we have on Monday. Uh, we have first, we have Houston and Oakland, and then followed up by the Yankees and the Rays. So let's hop in. Both of them are slates that I love because the starting pitching is pretty good. So the first game, as you can see on my screen, uh, is going to be uh, Houston against uh, Oakland. Lance McCullers on the mound against Chris Bassett. Uh, Oakland is a small favorite here, over under of eight. So we're expecting a little bit more runs here than we're going to see in the second game. But I think in cash games, you would definitely look to use both pitchers. Bassett has been pitching out of his mind this year. McCullers with a little bit more strikeout upside. Uh, so I think both of them are certainly in play. Uh, the second game, uh, the Yankees a minus 150 favorite with Garrett Cole in the mound against Blake Snell. Blake Snell was elite in his first matchup against um, the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, lasted, I think, only five innings, maybe almost six. Again, he, he just it's a little bit tough for him to control the his pitch count, but it does lead to more strikeouts. So where Garrett Cole, obviously, we know is a little bit more efficient. Uh, so let's get into the slate. And obviously... Um, with both pitchers that I'm going to be potentially using here. Um, in GPPs, I think you always can play the game script of if you think Houston wins and gets after Bassett, uh, you can fade Bassett and then maybe pay for a hitter like Springer. Just to, th to, to put it in perspective here, uh, why starting pitchers are always still more viable in cash. Um, say, Springer, say Springer even hits a home run. Um, and has 14 points. Well, Bassett's mean projection is more than more than a home run already. Uh, so the chances of Springer hitting a home run are already low. Uh, and then Bassett's projection is probably going to be somewhere like five to seven points more than that. Uh, so again, you you just look for that price tag that's going to be so close to um, an elite hitter, an elite pitcher. Then I think, or uh, you know, elite pitcher in this case, I, I don't really. Didn't really think I'd be saying Bassett is an elite pitcher, but if you just look what he has done this year, uh, you know, 2.19 ERA, uh, you know, hasn't given up more than a run since the end of August. Uh, that was like his only short outing, and actually it was against Houston, but then followed it up with a shutout performance with four strikeouts in seven innings, 23 DK. So, uh, he's been over 20 points in one, two, three, four, five games in a row. And, you know, and did it in the first, in the playoff game against the White Sox, six, seven innings, one earned run, five strikeouts. So you're not going to, I don't expect to see a 10 strikeout game. I don't even really expect to see over five, honestly, against Houston who in this lineup doesn't strike out a lot, but I think he can get out. I think at 11,000, he's still definitely in play. Uh, Lance McCullers. He's had a little bit more of an up and down season, came back from the injury, uh, had, has, but has had some really good starts as of late. Uh, and the strikeouts are there, nine, seven, eight. Uh, I know the opponents were pretty weak in terms of strikeout, but there's no way I'm fading McCullers in this matchup. So um, if I just like plug in, even Bassett is the most expensive and down to McCullers, leaves me about uh, a little bit under 6,000 left per player. So I do want to just touch on some of the guys that I like that are cheap. Uh, I think Michael Brantley at 6,000 is going to be one of my first hitters in, probably hitting a three or four hole. 6,000, a little less home run upside, but a lot of a lot of really good contact. Um, someone like Robbie Grossman, depending on where he falls in the lineup, if he falls in that 6-7 range, I'm more likely to fade. If he's hitting the two hole, I'm more likely to play him at 5,800. And then probably who I think is really underpriced here is Guriel. Um, you know, he, he wasn't great against the Twins, but uh, again, if he's hitting five, maybe he'll be hitting six. <clears throat> I think Guriel at 5,200 is a, is a great play because your next options are going to be guys like uh, Josh Reddick at 4,600. Um, maybe Pinder makes the lineup. Uh, I doubt Kemp makes the lineup. I doubt Garneau. I doubt Straw. So Reddick is probably going to be your cheapest there. So that's why I think that um, Brantley – Guriel and Grossman would be my top three targets down below this price range, which then would allow you likely to get up to maybe, you know, one guy in the Kyle Tucker, 
uh, maybe even up to Altuve or Laureano uh, or, or Correa. Correa uh, has been good as well. So that is uh, the Houston and Oakland side. Like I said, if you want to fade McCullers, then stack up with Semien, stack up with Laureano, stack up with uh, Matt Olson. Um, we know that Chapman is out, but I think um, in GPP is fading one of the pitchers and taking stacking that other side is definitely uh, a positive expected value play in GPPs. All right, now we have Garrett Cole and Blake Snell, uh, two massive strikeout upside pitchers. Uh, Snell has had some rough outings this year, so I can definitely see against the playoff Yankees who just seem to continue to put up runs and not give any pitcher an easy way out. Uh, I can see the fate of Blake Snell more than I can see the fate of Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole will be locked in the captain lineup in every lineup I build probably uh, for sh this showdown slate. Um, but if you do use both, you know, that's going to leave you about 5,500 left per player. Probably have a little bit less options here on a slate like this. If we just move down to that price range, you're going to see most of them going to be guys that are playing for the Rays. Um, Gardner, 4,600 could be kind of popular because he'll likely be hitting eight, uh, and it's a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup that's not very good. Uh, depending on who they start at catcher, uh, we could see uh, Higash I think it's Higashioka uh, maybe against a lefty. Otherwise, we might see uh, Gary Sanchez, who I think is way overpriced. Yeah, eight thousand. He's been hitting the nine hole, but uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to live and die with some of these Tampa Bay hitters. Uh, like Yiman Choi has absolutely had Garrett Cole's number all year. Has hit at least two bombs off of him. So I really like him. I assume he'll make the lineup against Garrett Cole. Yandy Diaz is in or out, but if he does make the lineup, he's usually in the three or four hole. Uh, same with Yoshi. Yoshi could definitely see the lineup at 5,600. So, you know, you might be stuck with a group of these three guys, depending on who they use in the DH, uh, with maybe Gardner being your one one off. You know, I, he's viable. It's just, it's going to be tough if you use both pitchers and Garrett Cole and captain but that will be the chalk build in cash. So if you're looking, look at all the sharp players, the high stakes cash players for MLB showdown. Almost 90% of the time they're using both starting pitchers, even if the starting pitcher is like average, because if their median projection is 10 to 15, that's still potentially a home run needed from a hitter. So obviously there's downside if they get smashed, but um, I don't see Garrett, that happening to Garrett Cole here. And I think there's too much strikeout upside for Blake Snell to fade in cash. So hopefully this gets to give you uh, kind of the lay of the land for the two showdown slates. Uh, if you're playing the two gamer, I would start with Garrett Cole and then probably pick a side of Bassett or McCullers. Uh, or if you just want to game stack the hitters in the first game and then use the pitchers uh, for the second game, I think that's certainly viable as well. All right. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys checking in with the MLB Showdown. If you have not checked out my NFL Showdown uh, video for tonight or Gators uh, week, five, week Four recap on his, on his NFL content, make sure to check that out. Give, him, give all the videos a like. Like I said, it costs you nothing to subscribe or give a like or give a comment, but it helps us out a ton, and we really appreciate that. We have a lot of free rooms at uh, Fantasy Sports Insight, which include EuroLeague right now, Monkey Knife Fight, uh, we have eSports is free and we want to be able to keep all those rooms free and what helps doing that is supporting our YouTube channel. So thanks a lot and I will be signing out.